a little hook to get people into their church. They're like, hey, you don't understand trans people and you're scared of trans people and you don't want your children to be trans people. Neither do we. Here, read our book about how trans people shouldn't exist. In an attempt to explain the abrupt emergence of tens of thousands of gender confused children who were suddenly questioning their sexual identity. In other words, the sharp increase of cases in dysphoria was not a naturally occurring phenomenon, but an internet-fueled peer contagion. Pope Summit Ministries President Dr. Jeff Myers and Christian Post reporter Brandon Showalter explore the diabolical nature of the movement and how to stop this ideology from continuing to wreak havoc. Because communities are out there, because support is out there to help communities and individuals. That's what's going on. And more importantly, there are treatments for gender dysphoria. When people come to these realizations, they are more accepting of themselves. Everyone belongs on a spectrum. Find your spot on that spectrum and express who you are. Hello, hello, and thank you for joining me. This is a trans moment with Brandy Beckett. <laughs> Today, we are continuing our look at the Christian podcast, Generation Indoctrination, colon, the transgender battle. I think that's the name of it. It's hosted by Brandon Showalter, and it is produced and brought to us by the Christian Post. And today we are, yeah, we're picking up where we left off last time. All right, y'all, I have not listen to this episode or any of the future episodes yet. We are going to go through this together and we're going to uh, hear what they have to say. Transgender craze is growing and metastasizing in America and worldwide. Confusion is abounding. On season two of Generation Indoctrination, we're bringing you the powerful audio version of the new ebook, Exposing the Gender Lie, How to Protect Children and Teens from the Transgender Industry's False Ideology. In the this book, it's, it's a free book that they want to give away. And it's basically just a book written by Brandon and his uh, co-host there, uh, Mr. Myers. And uh, Myers, I think it's Jeff Myers, he is a minister at a church. So this is basically a tool as a little hook to get people into their church. They're like, hey! You don't understand trans people and you're scared of trans people and you don't want your children to be trans people. Neither do we. Here, read our book about how trans people shouldn't exist and come to our church. I, I think that's pretty much the entirety of their book. So let's go on. Let's, what else do they have to say? Book Summit Ministries President Dr. Jeff Myers and Christian Post reporter Brandon Showalter explore the diabolical nature of the movement and how to stop this ideology from continuing to wreak havoc. This is Chapter 2. Chapter 2. The History and Trajectory of Gender Ideology. Quote, What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Unquote. Ecclesiastes 1.9 A few years ago, the phrase rapid onset gender dysphoria, ROGD, emerged in an attempt to explain the abrupt emergence of tens of thousands of gender-confused children who were suddenly questioning their sexual identity. In 2018, public health researcher Lisa Lippmann published a peer-reviewed article in PLOS One, an academic journal examining the phenomenon. Her findings revealed that 65% of young girls who had self-identified as transgender during their adolescence did so after being immersed in social media for extended periods of time. In other words, the sharp increase of cases in dysphoria was not a naturally occurring phenomenon, but an internet-fueled peer contagion. It is not true at all. In 2018, more people were on the internet than in 2017. And in 2017, more people were on the internet than in 2010. And more people in 2010 were on the internet than in 2000. Right? That's how the thing works when internet grows and becomes part of our life. We all incorporate it into our lives. So saying that people have access to the internet then does something to their body? No. 
people had more access and got connected with other people who are going through similar experiences. Does that make sense? And more people are becoming aware of there are diagnosis and more people are becoming aware. And this is the most important part that there are support for people who have diagnosis. If you're experiencing gender dysphoria, everyone around you is not experiencing gender dysphoria and you have not talked with anyone who is experiencing gender dysphoria, it's probably pretty confusing on what's going on in your body and in your brain and, and what's happening with you. But if you have access to a community of people who are expressing themselves and sharing their stories of how they discovered their gender identity and how they realize that gender dysphoria is real and gender dysphoria hurts. And more importantly, there are treatments for gender dysphoria. When people come to these realizations, they are more accepting of themselves. And when people around them are more accepting of them, there is more support around them. I 100% expect cases of gender dysphoria treatment to go up. Cases of people understanding that they're transgender going up because we are connecting with each other, because communities are out there, because support is out there to help communities and individuals that's what's going on it's not this craze that hey someone came up with this wild idea that you can start manipulating your body just because it's fun <laughs> and that caught on like it's a effing tide pod challenge on tiktok or something that is ridiculous y'all people are connecting with communities and getting the treatments and services and support that they need. That's what we're seeing in the increase of these cases. So what else do you have to say, Brandon? Common onset is a phrase that accurately describes how people feel about the gender ideology movement in general. They ask, where did this come from all of a sudden? Well, it did not arise all of a sudden. An old adage says, what is taught in the classroom in one generation will be believed and practiced in government and society in the next generation. This is the case with gender ideology, which spread unnoticed in academic circles for decades before surfacing in recent years as a seemingly overwhelming force, riding shotgun and occasionally taking the wheel as the novelty of gender bending popular culture swerved its way into the American consciousness. As a graduate student, one of the authors of this book was assigned a scholarly written article in the late 80s entitled Doing Gender. It argued that gender was not a biological state, but a, quote, routine accomplishment embedded in everyday interaction, unquote. Saturated in pseudo-academic jargon, the article posited that gender does not refer to essential traits, but rather performances based on how people present themselves and are viewed by others. This was three... That's part of it, yeah. So what that book is talking about is gender performance. And think about it, everyone performs gender. You perform gender. Everyone around you is performing gender, right? Because you express your identity and you perform that identity. When you interact with society and when you interact with yourself, like when you interact with the social mirror around you and when you interact with the mirror on the wall, those interactions, you're performing your gender identity. So it's a performance. You perform it to yourself, you perform it to society. And hopefully you're performing and expressing what is in you. Because that's the important part. Identify the gender within you. Somewhere on a spectrum. Gender is on a spectrum, y'all. There are as many points as you want to put on the spectrum of gender. Find where you are on that spectrum of gender and express that and perform that no matter where you are on the spectrum. And no matter where your loved ones are on a spectrum, love and respect them and support them. You can take spectrum concepts and block them off into binaries. 
not everything's gonna fit in there. Like sexuality on a spectrum. Not everyone's going to fit into a box of sexuality. Your gender identity is also in the same vein. Not everyone is going to fit into a binary box system of gender identity. But everyone belongs on a spectrum. Find your spot on that spectrum and express who you are. And hopefully society around us will support us for being us. Because that's the goal. To be yourself, express yourself, and have support doing that. I don't see the problem in this, people. But Brandon seems to have a problem with that. Decades before the writing of the book you are reading right now. Doing gender, in turn, was based on a theory that was articulated by Irving Goffman in the 1950s. Goffman's social interaction theory was advanced the notion that when people interact with one another, they play roles based on what they think is expected of them. These roles are based on what people do, not on what they are. Goffman's work set in motion what is now a given in academic circles, that we humans are basically a set of social constructions based on our experiences and interactions. A person is not a husband or wife in a particular sense, but just a person who acts as he or she thinks that other people think a husband or wife should act. Similarly, or more importantly, how they think a husband or a wife should act. Isn't that the most important part? You can have the opinions of the society around you, but if you want to be true and honest to yourself, you got to ask yourself, how do I feel that part? How do I feel about that part within me? And how do I express that part? There's not a mold that is created arbitrarily in our society and saying everyone must fit this mold or, or you don't belong in society, apparently. No, it's silly. It's silly to try to fit a mold unless that mold is coming from within. The Doing Gender article asserted that categories of male and female are relevant only in that we present ourselves as we think male and female ought to be presented based on the stereotypes we unconsciously accept. Without this theoretical uncoupling of sex and gender, gender ideology makes no sense. With it, no other view makes sense. This is why, if you find yourself interacting with people who embrace gender ideology, you might get the distinct impression that they see you as bad, not just wrong. The very idea of what it means to be human shifted long ago in academia. And most people did not notice until it came to the public's attention in the form of biological males wanting to compete on women's sports teams or use women's restrooms. Ideas have caught. Oh, he's coming way out of left field from there. There's so many steps in between. Where did you come up with this attack from? I'm gonna have to rewind this, my goodness. A person is not a husband or wife in a particular sense, but just a person who acts as he or she thinks that other people think a husband or wife should act. Okay. Agreed with that part. Now, what else? What else is he saying here? Similarly, the Doing Gender article asserted that categories of male and female are relevant only in that we present ourselves as we think male and female ought to be presented, based on the stereotypes we unconsciously accept. Yes. Without this theoretical uncoupling of sex and gender, gender ideology makes no sense. Wait, he's saying without this theoretically uncoupling of sex and gender. Oh, so he's saying, so Brandon is saying that you shouldn't uncouple the concept of sexual identity and sexual orientation and sexual expression and sexual performance from gender identity and gender performance and gender expression. He's saying that those should be coupled together. Well, you're wrong, Brandon. You're simply wrong on that case. Those are two separate concepts. Accept it by the DSM-5, by all of the major healthcare networks that care for trans and non-cis people, the WPATH, all the experts, the consensus among the experts in multiple fields is that the concept 
of sex and the concept of gender are uncoupled. They are not married to each other. Your sexuality does not dictate your gender identity, nor does your gender identity dictate your sexual orientation. They may play well together, they may align with each other, and they may fit the social norm that 98 to 99% of the population fit within. They seem to be coupled because in our society, we align our society around the majority of how people express themselves. And most people express themselves in their gender identity and their sexual orientation are in line with the social norms. But not everybody. That is not the case for everybody. So there we demonstrate that they cannot be coupled because not the entire population has their gender identity and their sexual orientation coupled. They are completely separate. They're separate things. <laughs> separate concepts, separate drives, separate identities. There's the mistake. You're making a fallacious error by saying that they are coupled and dependent on each other because they are not. With it, no other view makes sense. This is why if you find yourself interacting with people who embrace gender ideology, you might get the distinct impression that they see you as bad, not just wrong. No. The very idea of what it no, Brandon, not bad. We're not seeing you as bad. We're seeing you as wrong, yes. There's always going to be people who are wrong. And to progress as a society, we have to look at that. We have to say, hey, look, we're not identifying the entirety of our society. We're not addressing all of the needs of our society by maintaining this coupling that doesn't quite exist and judging people by a coupling that does not exist and measuring their worth by that coupling. That is fallacious and not a good way to have our society set up at all. Well, that's about all I'm going to review today. We will continue with uh, Season 2, Episode 3 of Generation Indoctrination, colon, the transgender battle. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, close enough. I am going to leave you with this thought. Love yourself, but more importantly, like yourself. And treat people the way that they want to be treated. Bye-bye for now.